Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we are starting a new series on this channel. We are beginning to do super flex mock drafts. This one is on Fantasy Pros' Draft Wizard, which is a mock draft simulator. It's a very good way to do your drafts. It has better ADPs than most other sites, I would say. I'm not going to throw out the sites that don't have good ADPs, but for those of you guys who have done mock drafts on many websites, you probably know exactly which ones I'm talking about. And this In this draft, you can do it fast. The mock drafts go by very quickly. So I do like it. I think that it is very, very easy to do one or two mock drafts a week up until the season so you guys can prepare yourself for your mock drafts. But maybe an even better way is to watch these mock drafts that I'm doing because I make sure to give you guys analysis and expert advice on all my picks. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the draft. So this is just a 12-team PPR Superflex mock draft. In case you don't know what Superflex is, basically you can do different roster constructions, but I'm keeping it regular. One quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, one defense, and one kicker. But we're adding one more flex position. But instead of just wide receiver, running back, and tight end, you can also put a quarterback in there. It's a little different than a regular two-quarterback league because in a regular two-quarterback league, you have to start two quarterbacks. In Superflex, you still have to start one quarterback, but there's one extra spot that you can put a quarterback in. So normally, 99% of the time, you're going to have a quarterback in that spot. But if your quarterbacks are injured and you can't fill up that spot with a quarterback, it's not the end of the world because you can still put in a wide receiver running back or a tight end. So that is the roster construction that we have today. One quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, one regular flex, one super flex, kicker and a defense, and six bench positions from the first overall selection. Let's go get right into the beginning of this mock draft. Okay, guys, so first overall pick, like I said, it's our pick. And one other thing that I like about this draft wizard simulator is that it also says what the experts think that you should do. Take it with a grain of salt because we don't know exactly who the experts are. Some of them might not be that great, but nonetheless, it is a little helpful. I personally kind of ignore it because I feel like I already know what I'm doing. But if any of you guys are beginners, it could come in handy for sure. So 49% of experts want me to take Patrick Mahomes, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to take Christian McCaffrey. He's definitely the pick here. Even in a super flex league, running backs are the most valuable position. So Christian McCaffrey, no doubt, is the player who I am going to go with here. It doesn't really make much sense to not go with him, in my opinion. So we went with Christian McCaffrey. And now it's our pick again. And since our last pick, Kamara, Mahomes, Barkley, Michael Thomas, Zeke, Henry, Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott, Dalvin Cook, Russell Wilson, Devontae Adams, Hopkins, Kyler Murray, Joe Mixon, Tyreek Hill, Miles Sanders, Josh Jacobs, Deshaun Watson, Travis Kelsey, Austin Eckler, Nick Chubb, and Aaron Jones. So I think that Lamar Jackson went much, much too late. He should have went by the fifth pick for sure. It is a little strange that he did go that late, but you know sometimes these ADPs aren't the most up to date. So I'll, I'll give Fantasy Pros a break on this. By the way, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just, everything that I'm saying about them is what I truly feel. So looking at the players available, we have Kenyon Drake, who I have been low on all of this season, but he fell quite a bit, so we could consider taking him. Then we have Julio and Godwin. I like Godwin more. And at tight end, George Kittle. So Travis Kelsey is not there. And at quarterback, we have Josh Allen and Matt Ryan as well as Carson Wentz and Drew Brees. So personally, I would probably take Josh Allen first. He's not great in real life, but at least now. But in fantasy, he is certainly a great, great pick. So we're going to take him here. And I'm not necessarily taking him ahead of the running back or wide receiver that we take. I just, I mean... We have back-to-back -back picks, so it doesn't really matter. I'm not saying that he's more valuable than our other pick, which is looking like it'll be Kenyon Drake. 
We could take Godwin, but you know, running backs still go off the board quite early. Let's see if there's any other running backs who are worth it. No, no one who I would take. So we'll go with Kenyon Drake. I think he's very risky, and I haven't been taking him that much. Normally, he goes in the late second, or excuse me, early second or late first round in regular leagues. And in two quarterback leagues, he usually, in my experience, goes before the last pick of the second round, but he fell a little bit, so I'm very happy with that. Since our last pick, we saw players go with Julio right after Kenyon Drake, followed by Chris Godwin. Robert Woods goes very, very early. I don't like that pick at all. Allen Robinson, Tom Brady, CEH, Matt Ryan, Drew Brees, Kittle, Mike Evans, Kenny Galladay, Aaron Rodgers, Adam Thielen, Juju, Todd Gurley, Leonard Fournette, Zach Ertz, DJ Moore, OBJ, Ridley, Tannehill, and Keenan Allen. So it's our pick once again. We'll take another look at quarterback, and I like Stafford here. I like Wentz. So we can consider taking him. Just looking at the other players available, yeah, they're, they're kind of all gone at this point. So normally I don't like waiting on quarterbacks too much, but when they go this early, sometimes it's not really worth it to take guys this early. I'm not sure if taking Wentz or Stafford would be the best idea if we're doing it this early. So we'll just take a look at running back, and I'm looking on the side here, on the very left, by the way. I'm not looking at the main screen because it doesn't show a ton of players. So we're going all the way on the left to look, and I see Chris Carson, Le'Veon Bell, those are the guys I like here. I get them in almost every draft, it seems like. Then at wide receiver, we have Amari Cooper, Cooper Cup. I like Cooper Cup the most right there. Quick look at tight end. Mark Andrews is there, so we could consider that. But to be honest, I feel like Cooper Cup and Chris Carson are the better picks. So we'll go with Chris Carson here. I love him. He's in a very good offense who loves to use Chris Carson. Rashad Penny had a mid-season ACL injury, torn ACL, that is. So he is not going to play much this upcoming season. Carlos Hyde will be the second string back, but he's really not that good. He's just gotten a lot of carries. He's been overused, but Pete Carroll is not going to be using Carlos Hyde like he had been used in the past, so I'm not worried about that. Then Cooper Cup is our next pick. I love him. He is definitely Jared Goff's safety blanket. Jared, Goff's, Jared Goff loves to throw to him, and I do like Robert Woods a lot, and I like Tyler Higby as well, but Cooper Cup still is his safety blanket, and it makes no sense why Robert Woods went so much earlier than Cooper Cup did. Now, I do think that Robert Woods' ADP is normally better than Cooper Cup's, but when Robert Woods goes in the third round, that doesn't make any sense. So then we saw Tyler Lockett go, followed by Darren Waller, Le'Veon Bell, Melvin Gordon, Amari Cooper, A.J. Brown, Cortland Sutton, James Conner, D.J. Shark, Mark Ingram, David Johnson, Carson Wentz, McLaurin, Hilton, Mark Andrews, D.K. Metcalf, Devontae Parker, Devin Singletary, Jonathan Taylor, Daniel Jones, Jarvis Landry, and Big Ben. Now it's our pick in the late sixth round. So let's take a look at the roster that we have constructed. Josh Allen, Christian McCaffrey, Kenyon Drake, Cooper Cup, and Chris Carson. So we should probably look for another wide receiver, and a quarterback would be okay if we could find someone who we like. Matthew Stafford is available, and I think that is probably the move because looking at the other quarterbacks, there's not many guys who I really like. You know, Jared Goff, Cam Newton, they're all okay, but I'm not huge fans of them, but I love Stafford. Really, really like him. Then we have Tyler Boyd, Michael Gallup, all good options there. And, you know, even though I love those guys, David Montgomery fell quite a bit. Normally, I've been taking Kareem Hunt and Cam Akers right here, but David Montgomery fell way too far for me to pass up on him. So we are going to take David Montgomery with that pick. And with our next pick, I love Stafford. He was great last season until he got injured. But most medical experts don't think that it's very concerning at all. So we'll take Stafford. Love that offense. That offense is very high-powered. They love to pass the ball. And they should be healthy, hoping they'll be healthy at least. So I think Stafford is a great pick. As long as he can stay on the field, 
to be honest, I think that Stafford could be a top five quarterback. Since we took Stafford, we saw Baker go, followed by DeAndre Swift, Drew Locke, Jared Goff, Stephon Diggs, Kirk Cousins, AJ Green, Hollywood Brown, Joe Burrow, Tyler Higby, Kareem Hunt, Edelman, Cam Akers, Cam Newton, Brandon Cooks, Tyler Boyd, Jimmy Garoppolo, Michael Gallup, Gardner Minshew, Marvin Jones, Debo Samuel, and Raheem Mostert. So unfortunately, the wide receivers who I wanted went, but it's not too big of a concern because this is what I love so much about the wide receiver depth. There is so much in these drafts, and in previous years, I would never have waited this long for wide receivers, but we still have Darius Slayton. We still have Jamison Crowder. Now, am I flattered to have these guys as my wide receiver too? Not quite, but you know, if we look at my roster, when we have David Montgomery, Chris Carson, Kenyon Drake, and Christian McCaffrey, I can easily trade one of those guys for a decent receiver, no doubt. The value was David Montgomery in our last pick, or, well, Stafford was our last pick, but you know what I mean. Two picks ago, I guess, technically. David Montgomery was more valuable than the wide receivers there, so we took him because it's really not concerning at all. Wide receiver, we have value there. And then at running back, it looks like Darius Geis is the guy I like the most there. Quarterback, we don't need one, so no worries there. We'll take a wide receiver, and the guy I like here, I like C.D. Lamb, but Darius Slayton is my man here. I'm not quite sure if he's going to be the wide receiver one in this offense, which is a little concerning, but at the very worst, he should be the second string wide receiver, and it should be very, very, very close. So I think Slayton is great. He's probably the best wide receiver on this team, so we'll take him. Even though Will Fuller has some great weeks, he ha- he also has some bad weeks, and he's injured for half the season, so we're not going to take him. Darius Geis is there, who I like. Quick look at tight end, though, because we do need a tight end. No guys I really like there, so we'll take Darius Geis. Darius Geis, if he stays healthy, he should be a running back, too, for sure. No doubt about it, and he could be a borderline RB1 I think he is very talented. He's a better receiver than most people think, but he's still not great, of course, at receiving. But nonetheless, people kind of underestimate his receiving ability. It kind of depends on how they use their rookie, Antonio Gibson. If they use him as a wide receiver, that's great. If they use him as a pass-catching running back, it's a little worse for Darius Geis, but we'll see what happens there. Then we see Sterling Shepard, followed by Tariq Cohen, Will Fuller, Damian Williams, Henry Ruggs, John Brown, Deontay Johnson, James White, Matt Breida, Jordan Howard, Christian Kirk, Sony Michelle, Philip Lindsay, Philip Rivers, J.K. Dobbins, Justin Jefferson, San Francisco defense, Ronald Jones, Keyshawn Vaughn, Brashad Perriman, Tevin Coleman, and Anthony Miller. So Tevin Coleman fell quite a bit. I think that is great value right there. Obviously, if Raheem Mostert doesn't get traded, Tevin Coleman isn't anything special there. But if Raheem Mostert gets traded, Tevin Coleman's probably a fifth-round pick at the very worst. Then Ronald Jones, I want to talk about him. He went one pick before Keyshawn Vaughn. I think Ronald Jones is definitely the running back to have in that backfield. He has receiving ability as well as rushing ability. He is an all-around back. There's no other running back in this offense who you can say that about. And even if Ronald Jones gets outperformed by Keyshawn Vaughn, which I highly doubt will happen. But even if that happens, to be honest, I think that there's still enough touches to go around in this backfield. Tom Brady has always used his running backs, and I think that should definitely be apparent in this Tampa Bay offense. So now it's our pick again. We're definitely going to take a wide receiver. Jameson Crowder's there. I love him. It's not much of a question. I'm going, well, CeeDee Lamb is available also. So that's kind of tough, actually. You know what? I'm going to, hmm. And we could go with two. We could go with both of them. At running back, there's no guys who I really like there. Quarterback, no one who I like there. In a two-quarterback league, I might take three quarterbacks. But in Superflex, if I have a good roster filled with good running backs and or wide receivers, I don't really take a third quarterback because, to be honest, it's kind of waste. I feel like people heavily overvalue 
third string quarterbacks in Superflex. They're not necessary at all. So I'm not going to take a third quarterback this early. We're going to take Jameson Crowder and CeeDee Lamb. Different players. Jameson Crowder is a guaranteed safe player who doesn't have a ton of upside on the season, but we know he's going to produce. And quite honestly, I don't see how he could underperform his ADP. I think his ADP is disrespectful to him. CD Lamb, on the other hand, could be sort of bust, but I feel like he has a lot of potential and could definitely be a really, really good pick. He's going to get 80 to 90 targets for sure. There's enough targets in this offense to go around. Dallas has the second most vacated targets going into 2020, so he should definitely have enough targets this season. I'm not really concerned about it. And I think he's very talented, so I'm very excited to see what happens with him this season. So since our C.D. Lamb pick, we saw Marlon Mack go off the board, followed by Emmanuel Sanders, Evan Ingram, Pittsburgh defense, Gronk. See, that is one player who his ADP has fallen quite a bit in this Fantasy Pros draft wizard. Not really fallen, it's just kind of out of touch. I think his ADP should be higher. I don't really like Gronk, but his ADP will be higher in your guys' drafts later on into the offseason. I can promise you that. Then Sam Darnold, Jerry Judy, McCole Hardman, Mike Williams, Robbie Anderson, Hunter Henry, Kerryon Johnson, Zach Moss, Naheem Hines, Alexander Madison, Michael Pittman, Alshon Jeffrey, Buffalo defense, Bridgewater, Baltimore defense, Duke Johnson, and Curtis Samuel. And now it's our pick. We'll take another look at our roster. We have two bench spots. We still need to draft a tight end. So we're going to look at them because, you know, honestly, I mean, there's so many tight ends this season. I'm cool with so many of them. And the first one who I see is Hayden Hurst. I think he's risky, so I'm definitely going to take a backup tight end. But Hayden Hurst does have top five upside. You know, Austin Hooper has never been great. I don't think he's the most talented guy, but this offense just used him a ton. There are so many vacated targets in this offense. He should definitely have, I mean, I won't say definitely, but I definitely think that there's a chance, at least, that he gets 90 to 100 targets. No doubt in my mind that that could happen. So we're going to take Hayden Hurst. There's not much competition. So I think that he should be a great pick, and he's going to produce in this offense. Now we have to decide if we want to take a backup tight end here or a different position. Jalen Rieger, Nikhil Harry, I like them. At running back, no one who I really like. If we pass on Rieger or Harry, they probably won't be available with our next pick. Actually, they won't be available for sure, but tight ends will. So we're going to take Nikhil Harry here. If you want to take Rieger, that's okay, but Rieger is a rookie. Nikhil Harry is second season, and receivers typically don't do that well in their rookie season. Nikhil Harry is going to do good, especially if Cam Newton is a quarterback. Cam Newton loves to pass to big wide receivers. We've seen him throw to Devin Funchess and Calvin Benjamin a ton, and they're not that good at all. Harry is definitely better, so I think that even if Stidham is the quarterback, it should be okay, but Cam should be the starter, and assuming he is, I think Nikhil Harry is going to do great. Then we see Jacecki go off the board, followed by Fitzpatrick, Tyrod Taylor, Latavius Murray, Henderson, Tony Pollard, Jared Cook, Derek Carr, Golden Tate, Austin Hooper, Haskins, Boston Scott, Renfro, Chase Edmonds, New England defense, Antonio Gibson, Justin Jackson, Devontae Freeman, Sammy Watkins, Anthony McFarland, Jalen Rieger, and Carlos Hyde. So we're going to take our backup tight end now. And Noah Fant's available, who's very interesting because I feel like he's risky. So it is a little risky to take him since our starting tight end is risky, but I'm going to do it because I think that one of them should produce. So if you want to take Goddard or Jarwin or John New Smith or Hawkinson, feel free to do that. But I'm going to go with the riskier option in Noah Fant. I think he's risky because there's a lot of competition in the offense. But if he is the top target or the second target, he should be phenomenal for sure. No doubt in my mind. We're going to take one more look at our roster. And all we need is a defense and a kicker. So We'll look at the defenses here. There's no point in taking kickers before defenses, in my opinion. We see Chicago defense, New Orleans defense. I think I think Minnesota is the best defense here. 
They're a great defense on paper, and they've always been a good fantasy defense. So, you know, why wouldn't I take them here? I think that they're the best option there. But if you wanted to take someone else, you know, or a different team, I should say, I don't think it's the end of the world. You know, you can make an argument for many, many different defenses available. Then since our last pick, or our last two picks, I should say, we saw quite a few defenses go. We saw LA defense, Philadelphia defense, LA Rams defense, I should specify. So LA Rams defense, Philly defense, Adrian Peterson, Nick Foles, Tua, Preston Williams, Chicago defense, Deshaun Jackson, Harrison Butker, Kansas City defense, the new Patriots kicker, Justin Rowasser, or Rowasser. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce his name, but that's who I'm talking about. New England defense, Justin Tucker, Jacoby Brissett, Greg Zerline, Will Lutz, Robbie Gould, Matt Prater, Matt Gay, Jake Elliott, Steven Goskowski, and Badgley. So we're just going to take our kicker now, and I like Gonzalez, I like Young Hoku, and that's about it. I'm going to take Zane Gonzalez here, just because I think that offense is a little faster paced, and that's what we want to see in kickers. And they're not a phenomenal offense to the point where they're just going to score touchdowns every time, but they're going to get into field goal range quite a bit. I love that pick right there. But, you know, if you want to go with a different kicker, there's not many worries there. So they gave us an 89 of 100. You know, I'm happy with that. But honestly, don't ever listen to their grading. They have a weird grading system. Trust me, no one even knows how they grade it. It doesn't make much sense. So I'm not going to worry about that grade. I'm just going to give myself a grade and I'm going to I'm going to, you know, give that more value than this. So, a quarterback, Josh Allen, and then we also have Matt Stafford with our other quarterback who will be in our super flex. I like that. I think that's a very good depth at wide receiver. At running back, Christian McCaffrey and Kenyon Drake as well as David Montgomery and Chris Carson. I love that. That is insane depth right there. We have safety with CMC and Chris Carson with a little bit of risk of Kenyon Drake and David Montgomery, and I think that's great. At tight end, we have Hayden Hurst and Noah Fant, and I think that's great there. Now, our only weakness is wide receiver. Cooper Cup is fine, but yes, Darius Slayton as our second wide receiver is a little scary. I wish Marvin Jones fell to us because I love him, but you know, you always have to have some weakness, and our weakness is wide receiver, but we still made up for it with a decent bench. When it comes to wide receivers, Jamison Crowder, C.D. Lamb, Nikhil Harry, I like that. And of course, Darius Geis is our fifth running back. I love that death right there. Running back is a strength on this team, and quarterback is pretty good too. So I would give this team probably in between an A- minus and an A. If we had Marvin Jones instead of Slayton, it would be an A. Because we have Slayton, it's kind of in the middle between an A- minus and an A. So I love this draft right here. So if I were to give it like, you know, a grade out of 100, I'd give it like a 93 and a half, a 94, something like that. So I love this draft. I think it's really good. If you guys are still here, thank you for sticking around. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video because it helps me get this video out to more people. And also, if you're still here and enjoyed, please let me know what your pick was the favorite out of all the picks here. Which one did you think that I got for the biggest steal? So, I mean, you can say Christian McCaffrey, but, you know, I mean, it's... Christian McCaffrey is... I don't want to say a boring pick because he's such a good player, but, you know, his ADP is the 101, and we got him at the 101, so there's nothing special there. But for everyone else, all the other players, which one did you think was the biggest steal? Let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe to me because I put out almost daily content. And if you don't follow me on Twitter, I put out daily content there, so make sure to go follow me there if you're not already. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Peace.